Hello everyone. Um, in April I took a uh, variety of images, deep space images, uh, lunar images, and solar images and I wanted to combine all that I did in one um, video. Um, it saves me time in a way and but uh, it also provides uh, just enough information hopefully to keep it interesting for you watching this video. So deep space images as well as some solar imaging were, were done with the StellarView 80 millimeter access refractor. Um, the deep space images uh, image train also consisted of the Teleview 0.8 focal reducer, the ZWO ASI 294 color pro camera, uh, mounted on the ZWO uh, AM5 strain wave mount and ZWO ASI Air Plus controller which uh, managed uh, all the astrophotography imaging, the guiding, uh, the plate solving and storage of all the images. Um, this, for solar imaging uh, uh, that was done with the same telescope a thousand oaks uh, full aperture glass solar filter uh, was used uh, which and that that really that filter is mounted on the front of the telescope and it blocks off just enough light and energy so that you can see sunspots uh, now for H alpha viewing and imaging of the Sun the daylight filters prominence filter eyepiece was used and then uh, Auto Stacker to IMPPG and Photoshop 2023 were used in processing. Um, the camera for the solar imaging was the ASI 174 mono camera. So the uh, lunar imaging was taken with uh, Celestron 9.25 inch SCT or Schmidt Cosgrain mounted on the Celestron Nexstar Evolution uh, Alt As mount. I used uh, SharpCat Pro for imaging, AutoStacker 3 for stacking, and Photoshop 2023 for image processing. Um, the ZWO ASI 585 was also used for lunar imaging, but the last two lunar images were taken with the Skywatcher SkyMax 127 Maxitoff mounted on the uh, Cel Celestron Nexter Evolution mount. And the ZWO ASI 174 mono camera were used. So the first deep space images that I've ever captured were done on uh, the night of April 7th and into the morning of the 8th of April 2023. Uh, and for this particular image and this particular that you see here, uh, 18 light frames and dark frames and flat frames were used and it's the first uh, deep space object uh, attempted using these calibration frames. A so free software called Deep Sky Stacker was used to perform registration and stacking of all the frames. Photoshop 2023 were was used to process the resulting file from the stacking process. But is this a good image? No, I'm afraid not um, because of the way you're looking at it you might be able to tell that there is some noise still in this image okay um, I made quite a few mistakes uh, when I was working on this image or imaging it and um, um, you can read on the side what mistakes I made but um, the imaging also image ended prematurely on and that was my fault instead of taking 30 image frames I took only 18 and uh, while I will reaccomplish this uh, at another time um, I'm still pretty happy with this because it has the distinction of being my first deep space image so M51A commonly called the Whirlpool galaxy is an interacting grand design galaxy and as you can see here it appears to be accent, uh, interacting with its neighbor M51B or NGC 5195. 
in 51 was discovered in 1773 by Charles Mezier and M51 B was discovered by uh, Mezier's uh, assistant Pierre Machin. However, only more recently was it discovered that these two are in fact interacting with each other. I don't really know exactly what that interaction is, but it looks like one or the other is collecting the other's uh, material, if you will. M51A is approximately 31 million light years from Earth with almost 77,000 light years in diameter. It's not quite as big as the uh, Milky Way, which is uh, 100,000 light years in diameter. So whether we're imaging um, and processing um, solar system data like the, like the planets or the sun or the moon, um, deep space imaging uh, also requires a great deal of uh, uh, learning, uh, to, to learning how to process it. Um, this is a far more interesting but difficult process. Um, but, and as these are my first attempts, um, and they're no, by no means great, uh, I must confess, I I'm, I'm really am proud of these. For this rendition of M51, uh, both Pix Insight and Photoshop 2023 were used. My goal was to make it more pleasing to look at without blowing up the core. And I think I did, while I did manage to that, um, the stars are bloated as you can see here. And I, I partially because maybe they were still just a tad out of focus and also uh, no filter were you, was used uh, in this image and I plan on using a, uh, a filter in my next set of imaging. Next, the next image um, that I imaged on the night of the 7th into the morning of the 8th uh, provided us with the view of these three targets. Um, 30 lights, darks and flats were used and autofocus, while it was used for the first time, I selected it by accident. And each of the 30 frames uh, captured was uh, five minutes long. Um, and while I will reattempt to capture better uh, details of these three objects, um, like the first one, I'm happy with the results. Um, Dithering was actually used in guiding uh, all the way. I, no, not quite all the way. I think a third of the way. Um, so some mistakes were still happening here, but uh, that's part of the process. Um, Deep Sky Stackard handled the registration and stacking of all the frames, and the resulting image was further processed in uh, Photoshop uh, 2023. Now let's talk about each of these three objects. The Cigar, Cigar Galaxy, or M82, is classified as a starburst type galaxy as it has a high number of stars forming. It is the second largest in the M81 group of galaxies, only after its namesake, of course, M81. It is approximately 40,000 800 light years across and approximately 11 million light years from Earth. In 2005, the Hubble Space Telescope discovered over a hundred young stars being formed at its core. Next up is M81, which is a grand design spiral galaxy. It's approximately 21 million light years distance from Earth and approximately 26 light years across. First discovered by Johann A. Ellert Bode on 31 December 1774 and identified by Charles Mezier and Pierre Manchain in 1779. It has a supermassive black hole at its core and is a favorite uh, for both professional and amateur astronomers uh, due to its brightness and grand spiral design and it can be easily seen using small optics. Uh, the M81 and 82 are a favorite of, of mine, uh, simply because it's always cool to, 
to see two galaxies in a single eyepiece and that's whether you have small but um, um, telescopes um, you don't need a camera to, to get to, to see these um, and it's one of the things that I uh, try to show is uh, anytime we set up um, and next up is the Garland Galaxy uh, or NGC 3077. Credit for its discovery was given to William Herschel on November 8, 1801 and considered an elliptical galaxy and is interesting as it shows wispy edges and scattered dust. Uh, dust clouds possibly due to an interaction with M81. Um, also interesting is it, it is an active or it has an ac active nucleus, meaning it has supermassive black holes. It has an apparent magnitude of 10.6 and is roughly 13 million light years from Earth. Okay, so this image was taken on April 1st of uh, 2023. Um, it is an image of the waxing gibbous moon, elimination at 85%. And on the April 1st, it was over 400 kilometers from Earth. Now, this image actually is comprised of over 40 uh, segments or pieces of the moon that I imaged. And uh, using the Celestron 9 and a quarter Schmidt Cosgrain um, and the 585 uh, ZWO camera. Um, so a thousand frames were were taken for each of the 40 or so frames um, and they were stitched using a free piece of software called Microsoft Image Composite Editor and then I processed a little further using uh, Photoshop 2023. The solar imaging taken on April 16th um, this particular image uh, is uh, referred to as a white light solar imaging due to the full aperture solar filter being placed over the, the front of the telescope or object, objective. The dark spots are referred to as sun spots and as you can see on April 16th we have considerable. The uh, detail is possible uh, in processing you know, are due to the processing and I, I managed to do it this way so that uh, the surface detail can be seen but note that the sunspots are considerably darker because of this. This is an H-alpha solar image um, and there are special filters that allow us to see surface detail and also the prominences of the sun. Here's another image showing more uh, surface detail and of course a variety of the prominences on the edge and you've got some uh, filament activity as well as sunspots here. And then the last H-alpha image, uh, is, which out of that day's imaging, I think this is my favorite due to the surface detail, color, and prominence activity. Um, so the sunspots that you see here and here are actually bigger than the Earth. And you actually see quite a bit of filament activity here. It's really cool and uh, the, the prominence activity, it, it looks really, really nice at the bottom. So uh, to process these images, I invert the solar image and what that does for me is provide a little bit more uh, interesting detail and almost makes the filament activity that you see here almost 3D-like. It's a really good result. And so the last set of images, uh, of, these are of the moon. Uh, there's two images here, the, and both of these were taken on April 29th. Uh, we celebrated Astronomy Day at the Clovis Carver Public Library in Clovis, New Mexico. 
uh, here um, shows the result of a thousand frames processed using Auto Stacker, IM PPG. Both of those two pieces of software are free, and Photoshop 2023. And then the last image, also taken on the 29th, is this. We is a really nice and pleasing view of the sun, I mean of the moon, showing really good crater detail. And um, again, a thousand frames stacked using Auto Stacker, processed using IMPPG and Photoshop 2023. And this concludes the presentation, actually. I hope you've enjoyed it. And if you, if you didn't or you have suggestions, feel free to leave comments um, you know, on, on the YouTube channel or uh, on my um, Facebook page or the Clovis uh, New Mexico Astronomy Club page as well. Clear skies, everyone.